Hi, this is Rocky Hall and today is interview day and we are in Burns, Oregon with Tom Davis and Tom's got a couple things on his mind and he wants to talk about today. And so we're going to go back to the, the uh, incident at the Moyer Refuge and we're going to start there. Start wherever you feel, wanted to start, Tom. Go ahead. Howdy folks. Uh, as you know, I was somewhat inactive with the stuff that happened down there at the Moyer Refuge. I'm known as the cowboy that was argue, um, discussing with one young lady that was down there protesting and the lands being returned back to the people in the state and that was quite a controversial thing um, that was used in the last trial in Oregon, the second trial in Oregon. And as the prosecutor asked me, he, the prosecutor at the trial, I was there for Daryl Thorne, as a witness for Daryl Thorne, asked me if I was anti-government. No, I am not anti-government. We Government is an essential part of the United States. We do need government. What I'm against is the corruption from within the government. Corruption from within the, any agencies in the government, from the police, to the counties, to the cities, to the state, to the federal these corrupt organizations and their military thugs that they have in the BLM, Forest Service, EPA, that feels it's their responsibility and duty to take over the land and control the land. These agencies were developed as management agencies. They are there to help out with improvements as the Bureau of Land Management was put into helping out with the Improvements on the allotments, they were there to help out with water improvements, fencing improvements, and making sure the pastures weren't overgrazed, the allotments. People have the misconception that the government owns the allotment. No, the allotment is divided into three parts, minerals, timber, and grass, graze. The ranchers that own allotments own the graze. They own all the grass that grows on that piece of property that is their allotment. They are entitled to the use of water to water their livestock. This is part of their allotment, their ownership. How you know they own the ownership? If you go for a bank loan on a ranch that has a, a say, it has 100 AUMs out the gate pasture on BLM. That means they can run a hundred head and that is used as collateral on their bank loan. So the bank recognizes through the loan process that they own that allotment to run a hundred head of cows. Another way you can know that it's something that is guaranteed their ownership is if the rancher dies, the allotment goes as inheritance to their family or the rancher can sell his allotment to another rancher for X number of dollars. So the ownership on the allotment on the graze, the grass, is guaranteed their property to be utilized as a desire. We have ranchers that do get greedy and they overgraze. The Bureau of Land Management is there and the Forest Service to ensure that they're not overgrazed. They're to ensure that there's fencing available and the fencing is in good shape and that the cattle rent, cattle do not trespass on other people's allotments. So this throat sh shows that it is a true ownership by the rancher, management by the Bureau of Land Managers as the name implies. But the federal government after 1972 FLIPMA Act, 1978 FLIPMA Act, came up and started saying no they own the land and they started this fairy tale telling it over and over and over till individuals like city people that have no rights to the land except to visit and do tourism on but they have no ownership of any of the allotment. They have no ownership of the minerals, gravel, rock, minerals. They have no ownership on the timber. They have no ownership on the grass. They are just transients passing through. In the forest, the forest was set up for one purpose, 
to sustain a community with timber for the prosperity of the community. It wasn't set up to lock down, shut down for the fires to come through and burn like that Forest Service. Mismanagement has done. The timber was there for allocation to maintain a community or the surrounding areas like state, schools, etc. These are points that have been forgotten because of the lies that has been presented by the Federal Bureau illegal agencies. So I just want to make that point known. I was there participating in the Malheur Refuge situation, or as I'd like prefer to call it, the Harney County Resource Center to inform the general public of the true nature of the allotments and that the state has true ownership over the land, not the federal government, as pointed out in the Constitution. I've got to say... I'm going to uh, break in just for a second, and, and I didn't say that today is July 2017, so the Moyer incident was over a year ago. Do you want to give the date of that? It was uh, January. January. It started January the second, at 2016 is when it got started. It got started by Ammon Bundy, and I believe there's 40 others went down to an unlocked facility that was closed for the winter, and took over, occupied the refuge. If they had guns or not, that is not the question, because we do have rights to bear arms. So that is not the question, but it became a quite the controversy with the government trying to get the social liberal, liberal Democrats in the United States to go, oh, there's guns, and all of a sudden they're fearful. Why are they fearful of the general public possessing arms, but they're not, they're not fearful of the federal government that has shown many times to be incompetent to have and possess a weapon through their brutality, their illegal acts they do perpetrate on people, by the assaults on people's houses. But that's okay because, oh my God, they got a badge. Excuse me. To be a badge pack and individual, you have two philosophies. The corruption of one side is that we are the enforcers. The true philosophy that a true law enforcement officer should believe in that we are peacekeeping individuals to maintain the peace and laws within the communities. So we've got to distinguish between those two. We can't round everybody up in one bunch and say just because you're law enforcement you're corrupt. No, there is good law enforcement that do practice being peacekeepers and instilling a good law through the Bill of Rights or we have the other which is a corruption side that practice enforcing the corrupt laws that is passed down to our poli from our politicians. We have individuals out here running around saying that all cops are bad. This in skill that is not true. It's time to wake up America. There's good side and there's bad. There's good and there's evil. There's good fathers, there's bad fathers, there's good mothers, there's bad mothers, there's good kids, bad kids. There's a opposite attract, good and evil. You take two magnets, try to put both north ends together, they will repel each other. Because you got positive to positive will not touch. You flip it around, you can take the south side of a bat magnet and the north side of a magnet, they'll stick together because negative is attracted to positive. As good, positive, evil, negative. They do run a line. And we must understand that. Get back to the Mulher Refuge. And my friend, a gentleman I quite well respected and admired, a family man, an honorable man, that was brutally murdered by an illegal roadblock, illegal law officers within Harney County, 
within the Oregon State Police, FBI, and other agencies and private agencies, Mercs on that, that came here with one thing in mind, and that was to kill. They wanted to dip their handkerchief in the blood of what they called patriots or terrorists in the corrupt Obama administration and the Brown administration here in Oregon called them. On the Mulhe Refuge, this is from Lavoy Finnegan. In response to reports of the Harney County Sheriff that the occupiers came to overthrow the federal government and spark movements across the United States, Finnegan said, I believe in the federal government. We need the federal government. But the federal government needs to adhere to their most important responsibilities, which is clearly outlined in the Constitution. We have an individual and his cohorts run around saying tyranny and abuse of the government. We do need government. Their Constitution was written as the rules for the government to follow. The Bill of Rights was written for us as American individuals to follow as our basic laws to follow. We must have the coherence between the two. Two positives coming together to create one greater good. The Bill of Rights and the Constitution. Some people will quote the Constitution they will say amendment so and so, section so and so, and they will take part of it. The Constitution was not written to be put into one one section and that to quote from this section or that. The Constitution was written as taken as a whole. You've got to understand the whole to realize the principle of the Constitution. So you might quote one section, but if you read further down it might state something totally different than what you read. So read and understand the full Constitution. Don't read this part and that part and think you understand it, that you do not. But as LaVoy Finnegan said, and people listen to those words, we do need a federal government. We do need, we need a government that adheres to the Constitution and the laws of the land. Till we have a government that adheres to the full Constitution and practices a Constitution and does not piecemeal the Constitution, we will not have the great nation that we once had. So please, people, stop cutting down segments of the Constitution to preach violence and to preach unruly behavior towards police, towards veterans, towards the federal government. We must stand up as a whole with the whole Constitution and our Bill of Rights to understand that we do have the right to be free men. Till then, we are slaves of the nation. Y'all have a good day. Thank you very much. Goodbye.